All right. So let's kick this thing off. I don't know how we're starting, but we'll kill the music. The- kill the music. <laughs> Cue the music. Cue the music. Do one more for uh for posterity's sake. Cue the music. Cue the music. It's always good. All oh, right, it is good. Two love our theme tune. Thank you so much for building that. Yeah, and you know it can change over time, and it might. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Composerish. I'll be your host today, Brian Tio, across the table for me. Over 700 miles away in Wisconsin is Kevin McLeod. Hello. Ugh. So I got some shit. Beautiful to weather here in New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got some shit. Got some- <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that much shit. Let's I mean, just, just kick right in. Kick right is, in. What kind I mean, of rant this is, is this? a triangle episode, so let's not hold back. So we're doing All right. We're doing it. Nobody else does an entire episode on triangles. Topic of today is triangles. Let's hear it. We oh. need we need a um uh, a, a sample rant track, I think. This is something yes, like a little sample rant. Like you, like, sample rant. Why are triangles so hard? Yeah, it's really a dumb instrument. Like <laughs> it's an incredibly useful instrument, but it's, it's one of those like auxiliary percussion things that comes in a pack for like little kids. That kind of like yeah. with the recorder and the tambourine and maracas. And I agree with you. I think it's difficult to find a good one. Yeah, like I bought a like a harp sample pack. It's like 150 bucks, 200 150 bucks, bucks for a harp. Yeah, well, a real harp is like $2,000, but in this case, a Fair, real okay. triangle is like $4, and like the best sample pack I have is, that's darn near 1000 and it's okay. Wait, wait, well, I mean, how much do you think a sampled triangle should cost? If a harp, I mean, does it scale? A harp costs like over $2,000. Oh, concert harp? Oh, they're, yeah, they're huge. They're expensive. They're heavy. They're awful. So $2,000 is probably minimum investment Minimum to get for, a harp. Uh, like, yeah, used, fell off the back of a truck harp. And I have no idea how much a triangle costs, but let's just say for the sake of argument, it costs $4. How much would you be willing to spend for a sampled triangle? I would pay like 80 bucks for a good sample triangle. Really? $80? Like like 80 bucks. Like if, if, it, if it would give me all the things that I want and I can do like, you know, Latin grooves on it, I'd pay 80 bucks for a real good triangle. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, how much? What, what sort of things does the triangle need to be able to do? Well, let's take a let's take a listen to a couple triangles. Q, East West Storm Drums, Cajun Triangle. Take a listen. Huh. All right. So, what are our thoughts about the East West Storm Drum Cajun Triangle? Uh, I like a lot of it. I like the, it is really atonal. You can't find a particular pitch in it, but it is kind of big and a little on the dark side. It feels like a heavy triangle. And if you want to do like super light work with it, I don't think it works so great for that. I agree. I think it it sounds a little thuddy. Yeah. It's got a kind of a clanginess to it, which I guess could work for some types of music. Yeah. Um, But when I personally think of a triangle, I think of like a really light sort of dainty ding. All right. Let's listen to uh, East West Symphonic Orchestra Triangle One. All right. There's your dainty ding, right? That'd be a great name for a band, by the way. The dainty ding. <laughs> hey, we're the dainty dings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not spend too much time on that. Um, is there a mute sample in there? Nope. Uh, <laughs> well, there there is a muted sample. Really? You heard it in the in the play there. Oh. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't mute an already ringing sample. Oh. So it's it's really not playable. The already ringing sample you would you would have to like somehow like manually kill all the tails on those in order to get them muted. So yeah, I feel like you'd have to bounce the track out to audio yeah. and then cut off manually. All right, let's try uh symphonic orchestra triangle two. All right. So what's the assessment for this one? Well, this one's a little beefier. It's a little bigger than the other one. It's not quite as, you know, light and airy. And the problem is if you're trying to do patterns with it, like down, 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 like that kind of stuff, uh, again, it doesn't work. The, the samples are just triggered and they're, they're never muted back out. And yeah, you can make a triangle line with it, but oh my God, I don't, I don't have the time. No, I mean, who's going to, Hey man, I spent all last night working on this sick triangle line. Check it out. (laughs) 
<laughs> and that seems like a thing that would be pretty easily fixed through some not even super slick scripting. That would just like you, all you need to do is trigger yeah. like a really quick taper whenever another, like a, a mute happened. Yeah. Is it just me or does it sound like the, after the it's muted, it actually goes on for a little bit longer, like in the room sound uh, after, well, that's because it's just bleeding through from the strike. Oh, so triangles just don't stop dead when you squeeze they them. They should. Yes, they do. <laughs> I, I think they, oh, I think they do. Yeah. I mean, that's like a, it's a really dainty yeah. sort of like mute, but there's, I feel like a lot of different types of mutes going on. Oh yeah. Maybe. Yeah. In real play. There's, yeah. You can do soft mutes and partial muted and open and full muted hits. Uh, yeah. So if you're spending $80 on a triangle, I mean, that's where your money's going really. Uh, let's go to the ESX 24 triangle. All right, you got thoughts on this one? Th this this one's free, so that's great. If you have logic, I mean, so are two dinner knives that you could just <laughs> clang together. Like, I, I feel like you could get the same sample by taking some cutlery from your kitchen drawer yeah. and just clanging it together. It's just so dead and thuddy sounding. I, I have a tough time coming up with the context that this would work really well in. Uh, it's recognizable as a triangle, and there's, I mean, there's triangles almost everywhere in every like wide like midi drum kit there's going to be a triangle in it and most of them sound kind of like this which is hmm. bad not great i have okay. some <laughs> like really cool latin percussion kits oh tons of triangles i don't have triangle in them oh, wait, they none. don't have triangle i don't know why no triangles they're there's a reason I didn't export them here. It's almost difficult to identify this as a triangle. I mean, it's metallic. Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, so let's just throw out. Let's just throw out that for any any reasonable work, unless you're trying to do I don't know mid 1990s video game work. Right. Like, or if you just don't care about what you're doing, <laughs> you want a ding? I'll give you a ding. Uh, all right. Next up, we got one that a lot of people listening may already have. If you have complete. If you bought Contact, this is from the Contact Factory Library, Triangle One. Same muting problem as before. Man. It'll play a mute sample, but it won't mute the already playing triangles. Yeah, this almost reminds me of like Crotales or something. It, it, it has more of like... um a gamelan sort of ringiness to mm. it. I guess I don't really know how to judge triangles, but it doesn't sound triangle-y <laughs> to me. And to all you percussionists out there, I apologize. Gotta, or maybe I just have no idea what a triangle sounds yeah, like. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, after listening to so many bad ones, it's it's hard to say. All right. But the muting thing is a really big problem. I mean, yeah. this is this is basic scripting that they they do with symbols all the time. So I don't know... Like any hi hat worth its salt will be will automatically stop ringing. Exactly. Yeah. It sh it should work like a hi hat. And, and do do the samples stack? Do you know if like if you play multiple of them in a row, do you still hear the decay from the previous yes. one, or does it cancel it out when nope. you restrike it? Nope. They they all they all just keep going. And if you hit a bunch, uh, you hit a bunch in a row, then it gets louder. Yeah. No. So it's cumulative, yeah. which real triangles are not. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean unless you have like fifteen triangles. Uh, it's really a Spitfire thing, like Hans Zimmer's triangles. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were going for. They had the epic, it's the, the triangle epic triangle. Ensemble. They're library. disposable. You hit them once and then you chuck them. <laughs> oh wait, you don't. <laughs> they could probably make one really good demo track for that that you'd hear on their website. <laughs> Epic triangle. All right, last the last bits I have here are the Cineperk triangles. Uh, this is a really long one. Uh, you so. have uh, Contact Factor e Library triangle. Oh yeah, we two. can. Yeah, we can listen to that. All right, the actual strike sound of that one sounds more it triangly. Do, it to does me. sound really triangly, and the great thing about this one is you might already have it. This comes in the the, in the contact. This comes in the library. contact factory library, and for me, the contact factory library is like page two of Google. <laughs> so the best place to lose like, something. Oh man, <laughs> you must really want something to try to dig something out of this collection. Actually, I don't even know it's in the contact factory library. How did you dig this out? Were you just digging through there, or were you just trying to find oh, triangles? Oh well, well, I have a I have a text file of every instrument that's installed on my computer. Ah, uh, that sounds like a pro tip. Pro tip! 
So <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know three thousand lines long or something like that. And I just and I just open it up and then you know Command F triangles, and then it showed me all the triangles that I knew that I had oh. and where they were located. So you use this to find out like where your instruments are stored, right? Because there's no one. I mean, everyone says that they have, it's like, oh yeah, you can use the complete thing and you can even load third parties into our VST. And they're like, no, I'm not <laughs> running everything through your VST just to get a search thing. I can't just say, you know, import these 15 libraries. You still have to type them all in. So a text file never goes bad. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and you can cross index where all of your crappy triangles are stored. I think um, one of the reasons why nobody has come up with a better one is maybe because it's just not worthwhile. Like there's a law of diminishing returns, right? You could spend probably an awful lot of time creating a very accurate triangle, but how much do you think you can realistically charge for one? <laughs> 80 bucks. I agree with you. I would spend, if I could find a decent triangle, I would actually probably spend almost a hundred dollars. I don't know if I would spend over a hundred dollars. I don't think I'd spend over a hundred. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous, right? But it is such a useful instrument and it's come up several times when I've personally been doing like, creating yeah. tracks. And because you brought this up, I'm assuming oh, yeah. you have as well. No, it's a pain. And then you realize everything is like a clangor. It's just like, dunk. Nope, that didn't do it. Right. And like doing like light orchestral work for cartoons and stuff, you don't need a lot of the muting and the fancy stuff. Or the room tone, actually. Yeah. I think because especially for cartoons, you, I want a very dry sample sound. And the problem with a lot of these orchestral triangles are it, the, the room is like baked into the sample. Right. So you get this cavernous triangle among these super dry pizzicato strings, which is just weird. All right. So we have a couple more to listen to. All right. To, so like, yeah, right? let's go to the, let's go to the big dog here. This is, uh, tr uh, Cineperk triangles, and there's like five of them. Well, these sound actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really like them. And you'll notice in uh, in, in these parts, the, uh, the muting doesn't really mute. It's working like the other triangles. It's just you hit the thing and then it happens. And then it'll play the sample out until the end. So you have a mute button on this. No, these not not in this. Not here. Oh yeah, you can definitely hear it there. One of the samples is muted and the other one just keeps ringing. Yeah. I like that it does give you several sizes. Yep. You get like five or six different triangles, maybe seven, I don't remember. Really long decay, though, after you mute. On right. That. So, but what CineSamples does do is they have triangles with muting. There is a muting thing, and it works kind of like uh, like a hi-hat. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to listen to that right now. Ah. Now we're starting to sound like triangle. Yeah, it's almost a little bit too abrupt, but I think if it's played in the proper context, I think it could absolutely work really well. Yeah. No, and if you're playing that in a groove and that is, that's just using the mute. There's also uh, like a strike mute uh, thing. I'm not real good at MIDI triangle technique, but that is probably the best triangle that I have. It works the best. Uh, in almost all situations. The problem with that triangle is that it comes with Cineperk, which is $700. And you're like, uh. Right, and there's like four <laughs> different tiers of Cineperk as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, there's they, like they the Cineperk them. core. No, they merged oh, they them did. all into one, yeah. That's useful because I hate when you find too many sample packs. Like you guys have like seven different string libraries. Which one am I supposed to use? I'm looking at you, Spitfire. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, great. Uh, so there's just one Cineperk now. That's great for 700 bucks. So yeah. if you want to spend $700 to get a decent triangle, 
The best one that Kevin McLeod has ever heard or used. That's it's, that's the best one I got. It My for God, only seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Otherwise, contact Factory Library Triangle Two. Eh, I mean, you have to buy Contact, but if you already have Contact, you might already have that one. It's kind of okay. I mean, it's one of those things that I feel like you should probably just have anyway. Yeah. I looked into Contact scripting for a while to try to learn how to make MIDI instruments, and the whole business plan was: I don't want to make epic string libraries because Lord knows that's, that's been covered ground. Yeah, we don't need that. I would only focus on instruments that people think are too stupid to bother with. Like a good hurdy-gurdy? Sure. I Actually, I think that might exist at now. I have a couple of hurdy-gurdies. I don't know if they're any good. I don't know how to play the hurdy-gurdy. It's a weird instrument. It is a weird instrument. And there's a lot of control, I think, over the, the rosined wheel. Is right. It? A it's rosined a wheel, rosin wheel, and then you push strings onto it. Yeah, I would love to do like like shakers and and triangles, and try to come up with ways to capture them because it's like all this auxiliary percussion. I feel like is really difficult to accurately portray through MIDI. Yeah, uh, we have one more, I believe. Oh, uh, right, we, is a unknown contact freebie triangle. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and play that. That's not bad. Yeah, I wish I could recommend it because I forgot where I got it from, but it might be one of those Cine Samples freebie packs that they give away every now and again. Yep, and I just looked it up. You can find this if you just Google Cine Samples Free Triangle. I have this one in my collection, actually, and I think the last couple of times I've needed a triangle, this is what I ended up using. Okay, yeah, so what, what are your go-to triangles? That's the one that I use the most often because I like the way that it mutes. Okay. Um, I'm able to actually play it. I really enjoy the way that the Cine Samples ones work. But I have trouble getting one that sits well in a mix just because I feel like the pitch isn't quite correct. Yeah, sometimes sometimes these things feel a little too pitched. They feel like you're playing a toy piano. Right, where it's got kind of like, it's got a clang burr, with a, a burr, fundamental burr, that's burr, with, identifiable. Right. And that then it makes it a problem. I mean, do I have to go through and tune it to make it work with the thing? And then what happens if like the track changes pitches or modulates or whatever. Do I change the triangle? Because that'd be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pro triangle players have multiple triangles. They have a triangle so tree. Is that a thing yet? The triangle. You know what? I think you can make one for about 40 bucks. All right. You heard it here first. I, I copyright that idea. <laughs> triangle tree. That's it. Yeah. I don't think I can copyright an idea anyway. No. <laughs> I can trademark it, but man. Triangle tree would be a great name for a sample company though. So that would be like the yeah. first instrument that you create. And you only, you only specialize in like Dr. Seussian instruments. <laughs> There's a lot of tubes and funnels going on here. A lot of tubes and funnels. I have an entire instrument that is just a sampled um, squeaky toy giraffe. Oh. Yeah, I think it's actually called the Atmiraf. Um, and I want to say that it's orange tree samples. It's a lot of use for that. Does that come up often? Um, I have used it exactly once in an animation. And it oh, was okay. because... A character was really disappointed, and I thought it'd be really funny just to have like a little. <laughs> 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 it worked really. It was really more of a sound design thing than it would have been the music thing, but I right. just stuck in there. And the uh, and the the producer was like, "Oh, that's really great. I love that." It's Embertone <laughs> makes the Atmoraf, and it's a free instrument. All right, time for a palate cleanser. <laughs> Um, so I came across an article the other day and I wanted to know what you thought of this. It is, um, how to make money from home if you're a musician in 2020, <laughs> which considering that most people are working from home these days, yeah. um, due to the quarantine, I think there's a lot of people who were either touring musicians or maybe they dabbled in music before or now trying to make a buck. And this article seems like it's tailor made for them. I'm going to send it your way. And let me know what you think. All right. Okay, got it. And yes, I've I've seen this one. This came through my email. This is marketing for Arcade. Output Arcade, which is a, what do they do? Mastering tools? I don't even remember. I, I have actually no idea. I read through, uh, it's one instrument to rule them off. 
Arcade is a sample playground with new... Wait, we need like um, some sort of like infomercial theme music to go back here. All right, we got it. Um, here we go. All right, great. <laughs> uh, one instrument to rule them all. Arcade is a sample playground with new content delivered every day and tools to transform it all so it sounds like you. It even works with your own loops. Try it for free. Okay. It's a new kind of synthesizer. I love that. that it, it, it even works with your own loops. My, so Yeah, my own loops. I mean... There's, there's, there's an, there's an idea. Um, great. So this is a half baked article with an advertisement sort of underlying everything. And they have eight different ways of making money. Yeah. Let's just go down this list. Cause I think it's important for everyone to know. You can sell your beats, right? Production music libraries, sync catalogs, fiverr.com, distribute your music on streaming services, Patreon, Bandcamp, merch, and that that that's it, and and I'm like, oh yeah, oh so all you have to do to succeed is to sell your stuff. <laughs> oh really? All you have to do to sell music is just sell music. Who knew? My my uh, my my girlfriend's aunt when she found out that we were experimenting with cooking some Chinese food and stuff like that, she's like, oh you guys like Chinese food? You should go to China. You guys would love it there. It's like, oh I never thought of that before. That's such a good like. <laughs> All right, sorry. You so you talk to people that actually do this. I actually do this. What are some actual strategies aside from if you want to make money making music, just sell it. It's just sell it. Yeah. Uh, so let's take the first one here: selling beats online, a hundred to a thousand dollars a month or more. Okay. So I don't know anyone who's making beats, but I do know a guy who knows a guy who sells beats. That's what he does. Okay. And they're actually lowballing it here. They say, you know, a hundred to a thousand dollars a month. This guy sells up to ten thousand dollars a month in beats. Wow. Including to the likes of Kanye West. Wow. So you think Kanye West is doing his own beats? Probably not. He's just paying somebody to, to do those beats. Can it little, be done? Little yes. insider information. Little insider information. Well, how many beats does he make a month in order to be able to pull in that sort of money? Is, do we have any of those figures? Uh, I th- I think he's in like the like two to three beats a week territory. Okay, that's a reasonable amount of work. But for making like pro level production. Right. The the problem is getting your beats in front of someone. In order to make this go, you need to know a guy. Yeah. This is not stuff that's being sold on anybody's website. This is all person hands, like, you know, like almost a drive to another person or, you know, sends an email. Right. Here's I'm the guessing new beats. this is probably when having an agent or friends in high places is definitely useful because yeah. simply slapping it on a Squarespace site or on like Audio Jungle is probably not going to net you very much money at all. Yeah, probably no. Especially when it seems like the market is really saturated. I think there's that's a lot what, of people that's what that I thought. get into production through hip hop beats and dance tracks. Because hip hop loops are so cheap and easy to get. Why Why are people spending a hundred, a thousand dollars for a one-off of basically a, you know, a collection of five loops? I, I thought for a second you were going to say it was so easy to make. And I was like, oh, you got to be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, like, There's, I feel like it, it's deceptively difficult. Th- I mean, if you, if you get the, the software like machine th- where all it does is make beats and then you just load up your load up the new sample files into it and then you play it through all of your MIDI beats that you've made before, like, it's going to sound good. Like, you can make a lot of stuff that sounds fine, fast. But I wonder if the people who are are making a bunch of money at this are maybe not doing that. They are not doing that. I mean, this is an important (laughs) distinction to make is that just because you can get up and making beats pretty quickly, the people who are making money doing this are probably creating custom methods and- finding obscure samples to use and doing a lot of mangling on their own and maybe some custom processing, et cetera, et cetera. So selling beats online, I'm not going to call it complete bullshit. Selling beats is real. Selling beats online, good luck. Good luck finding uh, that because that's just all marketing now. Um, it's a, a real grassroots thing. I feel like you'd probably have to go to a lot of shows, talk to a lot of people right. until you start. You're not going to be doing this from rural Kansas. You need to be in a scene. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Production music libraries. $250 a month to Unlimited. I do this. You, I don't think you do this. Nope. And then they give us a list of libraries uh, in the article, which is like a, it's like a hundred. Most of them pay almost nothing. It's a lot of effort to get your music listed up there. It's a lot of effort to get all the metadata in there. 
and almost none of them pay. Uh, apparently, right now, Audio Jungle is still winning. It seems like you don't get any payment to get your track into a library. Um, from my understanding, they'll pay you a couple hundred dollars if it's included in like a pitch to an ad company or something. Okay. And then if it's actually selected, they may pay you more money and you'll get royalties and all that. And the big money is, I think, in the royalties that you get afterwards. But And the, produ- the production library will take a chunk of that. I think um, that comes under sync catalog. Oh, okay, great. I think the production library stuff is largely like YouTube videos, production houses. Oh. They'll spend there between 15 and $100 on a track to use in their, in their show. Got it. Uh, so I do know somebody who does this for a living. He's top 50 in Audio Jungle, so he makes about four grand a month. Uh, he asked me not to mention his name because of, I don't know, some sort of bulk and blood feud thing, but I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I think we have to know who this I, is. I want to know no, who I know that's a Vulcan. No, but <laughs> I don't think we need to know. I'm just kidding. We will honor any We're, requested anonymity, yes. of course. So, because how else are you going to get this information? It's like, all right, what does it take? I asked him, what does it take? Number one is a lot of music. You have to shit out music. It's basically like buying lottery tickets. You don't know which one's going to hit. You're you're pulling off, you know, at least a track a day. That's a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how long is the average track, do you think, in these cases? Two two to four minutes. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, he estimates you need about 15,000 tracks to make livable money over 10 years. 15,000. So 15,000. That's a lot. So that's 1,500 tracks a year. Right. That's, I mean, obviously, like more than th- three tracks a day on average. Am I correct? Yeah, four tracks. Four tracks a day. Holy crap. And that's to make like... Uh, you're scraping by sort of living. I mean, it's below the national average. I mean, you I'm, there are Walmart managers making more, certainly. We, we figured out how much time he spends on it versus how much money he makes on it. And after about six years in the business, he's up to about $18 an hour. Wow. Which is not terrible. That's not terrible. But he does work 60 to 80 hours a week. I was going to say, it's got to take an incredible amount of time to get production quality up to the level that you would need to have it right. in order to be placeable. It, it's not like operating a machine. Mm-hmm. You have to like come up with ideas. And after a while, I feel like the, the well can start to run dry. <laughs> and you're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> after 15,000 okay, tracks. i done all tracks, these things already. I would imagine. I guess basically I'll just start doing the same thing over again, but this time a little different. I don't know. Yeah. He also said you have to be, you have to be super aggressive with this stuff. You have to be on top of all your VSTs, all the new instruments that come out that look anywhere near useful. You buy them, like all of the reverbs and compressors, like all the high end stuff. It's like you, he's like, you got to have this stuff. And this is where me and unnamed Blood Feud Balkan dude uh, differ a little bit. It's like, I don't think you need to have. A $600 compressor. I don't think you need to run that, you know, through an analog tape. Well, I guess there are trends in music. I mean, I guess maybe for some of the processing plugins, maybe, maybe not. But you'll see this all of a sudden in music, like everyone will start using this one like 808 sample Mm -hmm. or something, or everyone will start using this synth or whatever. And it's probably because that was released to the public and then everyone has to scramble to make a track with it so they can get there first. Yeah. So uh, that's that's one of the selling trends that I learned about uh, where like if you go to the homepage and just start doing ripoffs of other pieces, it does work, but it works for a very short time. Wait, what do you mean? Like, Like he'll have things that are like deep catalog, which were not made specific to sound like everything else. And those will continually sell over the course of years. Selling trending tracks works for about a month. Two months on the long side if you get a hit. And then they just huh. then they just tank. Fizzle out and you never hear from them ever again. Right. And then they sometimes end up on free PD, which is great. <laughs> which is a very good deal if you need to uh, find production tracks it's, to add to your it projects. It is a very good deal. Freepd.com. Um, <laughs> but the other, the other thing that contributes to his being able to sell that much is his marketing. Oh, how? He has Facebook ads. And he spends hundreds and thousands of dollars a month on Facebook ads. So all this is coming out of his bottom line, though. I mean, if he's oh, yeah. making just under fifty grand a year, yeah, 
Um, plus, you have to buy every single instrument that comes out, and yep. these sample libraries aren't cheap. No, nope. they're several thousand dollars oftentimes right. a piece. Plus, the advertisement. I mean, your net gains are going to diminish. Right, and that's to get you quickly. in the to, that's to get you into the top fifty of Audio Jungle. Damn, and nobody's going to manage your ads. There's no, no, <laughs> no. it's no thing for that. You, right. I mean, you've you're either got to hire someone company. to do ads for you, or you got to build all the ads yourself and find all the people and do your A/B testing, and it becomes a lot less like writing music. It's like the the music is what you do when you're on break from doing all of your promotion, right? And photography and design. It's like step one: you want to make music, learn Photoshop. He is also in a few other libraries which are not Audio Jungle, but you got to know a guy, submit your catalog to them, and they'll just mostly ignore it. So yeah, you can make money not on Audio Jungle, but you probably need to know a guy in order to get into those. And you get a, a good start by starting on Audio Jungle, I'm guessing. Audio Jungle will at least tell you if you can hang with the crowd, right? It'll at least yeah. tell you if your production is good enough. And some people can't tell. A little dunning Especially when it's their own stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, this is great. Just sounds exactly like this other stuff I love. Ooh. Well, that's a, that's a delusion. Oh, you yeah. Have a hard time no. <laughs> disabusing yourself of. Anyway, takeaway from that is, yes, you can make money in production music libraries. If you're going to upload, you know, your 25 tracks that you produced over the last three years and expect a lot of money, it's nope. I'm hearing a trend right now that <laughs> there's just not a lot of money Period. Not not a lot of not a lot of money. Sync catalog. This is this is where there's some money, but this is where you need to know a guy. Like you can't yeah. get into sync catalogs with any amount of with any amount of profit without without knowing a guy. Fiverr.com. This is an interesting one, and I think this might be the stupidest oh, one. No, definitely. But maybe not the stupidest oh, one. No, it is the stupidest one. So Fiverr is a place where you can go and spend five bucks or. I mean, they've raised the rates. You can upcharge to whatever you want for providing a service. So like, I want somebody to write a happy birthday song to my girlfriend. And then you give somebody 15 bucks and then they send you a track. You can do it. But again, the marketing required to make this go. Well, and you're looking at, I think that the, not only where to sell, but where people go to buy. Yeah. A lot of the people going to fiverr.com to purchase music probably don't have the deepest pockets and are probably looking to spend very little. That um, they are. I, I looked into this a little bit when I was trying to figure out what I can do. And it seemed like most of the bids for projects were like a race to the bottom. Yep. And whoever won it was the one who was willing to undercut the other people by the most. And that's it. They just got the contract and it'd be like, okay, I can do your, your track for like a dollar or something. And it's like, wow. Yep. I got to do my first bunch of gigs for free so that I can get really good ratings. I mean, I guess that's probably in a lot of creative industries. That's the you market. Doing a lot of work yeah. for free at first because you need to prove that you can do the work before anything else happens. Yeah, no one's going to give you a $40,000 contract. Oh, maybe you can do it. It's like, no, no, no. You've pretty much had to have done it. Right. That's a, that's a big kahuna. It's a, it's a big, big matzo ball hanging out there. Yeah. There's just something I liked about them. Yeah. I, I think we should give them a chance. Just, yeah. Got spunk. All right, next up on the list, distribute your music on streaming services. Um, you have mentioned in previous episodes that you have done this. Oh, yes. It works out pretty well for works you. Works out great. This one you can get in. There's no gatekeeper. You don't got to know a guy. You just got to go and, I don't know, is it like 20 bucks a year or something to get a distro kit account? And then all your stuff goes on to Apple Music and Spotify and everywhere. It gets you in all the retail marketplaces. DistroKid is actually a really good deal. Oh, I um, love DistroKid. For the record, I don't work for them and they're not paying me. Yeah. Although if they wanted to, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> they No, it does. It takes a lot of the work out. They just like, there's all these streaming services that they're like, you should probably be on this. It's kind of a pain in the butt to apply to all of them, even yeah. though you can do the work yourself. I think it's worth the $20 or however much it is. It's still tricky to get into Apple Music by yourself. And Pandora. Mm. I haven't been able to crack that nut. Fair. So what are your metrics like? Just just under a million people last month oh, listened to me on Spotify. Great. Translates to about eh, 600, 800 bucks, somewhere in there. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Although the numbers that they throw out on this article, which might be old, says 1 million plays equals $4,000. No nope. Busted. <laughs> so they've, in, they've inflated that number quite a bit. <laughs> I don't know what streaming service is paying that much, but it ain't Spotify because that's where most of the money comes from. Right. I guess they just say streaming services, so they could be taking the highest number 
Right. I think Apple Music does pay more, but is not used by as many people. This is an interesting thing that I see an awful lot of creators doing. Um, I've never done it myself, but I always kind of wonder how efficient this is. Patreon. Patreon. And, and they say $5 per subscriber seems to be their suggestion, although I've, I've yeah. seen everything from like $1 to like $50 a month. Yeah. And it, subscription packages. And it averages out to about five bucks a person. No, this this is great, uh, especially for you, who is a beloved uh, composing personality. Oh, beloved. And charming. Everybody is, wants to is, be, uh, and then they get cool stuff from you, and you get to be their friend, and it's really great. So it's, it's reasonable, the uh, ability to, to create a community around this. Absolutely reasonable. What sorts of things do you offer as perks? Uh, very, I, I very see this a little. Lot. <laughs> When, when when people are, let's say, illustrative artists, they will offer like a sketch of somebody's avatar or profile or whatever as like one of their perks and people get to vote on what they create next. And there's all right. these sorts of things. Um, with the music thing, it seems a little bit more hazy. Like, I mean, are you writing custom jingles for everybody that donates or what? I just, that's not how it works for me. That's not how it works. Like I've started, I don't know, several podcasts in the past and they've gotten those podcasts. Like I'll do work for a company or something and I'll end up with a product which, you know, isn't really publishable, but I will give it to all my Patreon subscribers for free. Most of them will ignore it. Like what would what would you inform your friends about? If you were going to make like a blog post, like let's say there was some sort of social media thing. It's like Facebook, but with only people who like you. It's the it's really <laughs> good. And you know that they like you because they're paying you money. They're paying that's your how, money. The, Otherwise, they're self-loathing and just, you know, that's fine. <laughs> as long as they keep paying me money, they can loathe themselves as much as they'd like. Right. Yeah, you don't have to give – like I've given out uh, – I did custom ringtones for every subscriber uh, oh, once for those. my birthday. Uh, another time I made custom paintings and sent them out to everyone. You know, I'm like a slot machine, keeping it random. So these people are, are investing in you as a personality, not necessarily you as a composer. Right. Because right. they're they paying like you like five bucks a month right. and they might get a painting. They might. Probably won't. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> God knows what I'll be excited about, you know, next year or later this year. Puppets. The future is puppets. The future is puppets. Everyone gets a puppet. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be a lot of puppets. That would be a lot. I think you'd have to create a new tier for that because right. I think creating one puppet seems like it's a lot. All right. So Patreon, reasonable. Yeah. No, absolutely reasonable. And as long as you're out there and giving people what they want, you know, you're throwing up YouTube videos any things, then yeah. And you, you just post what you would have posted to Facebook. Patreon. Patreon.com. Just for the record, I mean, what, what is your Patreon? Patreon.com slash K McLeod. K-M-A-C-L-E-O-D. So, so ladies and gentlemen, you can, wait, where's, 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 do we have ad music? We need more yeah, ad music. Ad music. <laughs> Cue the music. <laughs> Patreon.com slash K McLeod. Slash you K too can join the league of extraordinary people i don't know yeah it's like I'm two bucks it. two bucks you get almost everything <laughs> band camp seems like it's similar to um well what like the fiverr thing maybe i don't know this is more of a you thing you you sell on band camp right i yeah you can actually do okay on band camp it, it depends obviously on your audience base um and digging into a niche style of music seems to be useful if you make just more general music like if you're in like a, a rock band mm -hmm. it might be more difficult unless you're going out and playing shows and touring a lot but once you have people that are subscribed to your feed that start paying attention and it, assuming you continue releasing music you can actually make an okay amount on that yeah do they do merch stuff too or is it just all digital can, downloads yes. or you can you can do anything on there so um i have sold digital downloads as well as t-shirts and button packs Okay. Um, I have seen other people do 
like vinyl records and stuff like that. I mean, you can sell pretty much anything. I had a friend who actually spent an awful lot of money to print a CD album because she, she really, that was what she grew up always wanting. So I want to have a CD. I want to put out a CD. And then when she sold the first several, people would just take it, stick it in their laptop, rip it right there in front of her and then give her back the CD and be like, here, do you want this back? You can just like resell it. (laughs) Yeah. And she's like, what? No, this is yours. You bought it. Like, yeah, I don't need it. Don't, don't really want (laughs) stuff. I mean, it was nice that they supported her anyway, but, um, there's one more on this list though, of ways to make money and yep. it's just merch. Merch. Just merch. Merch, which is another one that comes down to marketing. Marketing, right. Marketing. It seems like selling merch is a thing that is more viable if you're a touring group. Because I think if people go to a show and they enjoy it, they're going to be more willing to spend money on a shirt than if you have to ship it to them. Right. But you got people like me. I'm never going to go to a show. I also don't have How any band do shirts. Merch? Yeah, never. I get merch sometimes. People send me merch. Let me tell you this. If you want to support a touring musician, buying their stuff at a show is probably one of the best ways to do it because they just take all that profit. Yeah. Like the, the best way to do it is get your own t-shirt, grab a Sharpie, draw on the whatever logo you wanted, and then support them on Patreon because they get almost all of that. Patreon. Dot com. Maybe maybe I should offer uh, merch uh, templates on Patreon. All right. So this article, I, is any of this I, viable? I, I thought this article was the worst until I started talking to people. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's less than the worst, but it's still, I think, misleading. It grossly simplifies the process, I think. Yeah. Because, again, it does come across as, would you like to make money making music? Well, you should sell it. Eh, yeah. okay. It seems like right now from this discussion, the fastest ways to get up and running with making money, making music is to put stuff on audio jungle, maybe start a Patreon. Yep. Patreon costs you nothing to start. And neither does audio jungle actually. Audio jungle costs you nothing. And then also get on distro kid so that you can get into Spotify and iTunes, right. and- which does cost a nominal fee, but it's a one time for the full year. And it's incredibly I think incredibly worth it. And then you have to try to wisely, sagely split your time between music making and networking. Right. Which seems to be a terse balance. But or music making and marketing. It's both. It's You know, they should teach that more, I think, in music school. You don't they say. Have marketing courses. <laughs> yeah, if, you're, if you're thinking about going to college and you want to be a musician, absolutely, 100% go into business and marketing. There's your big takeaway. All right. It's got a spicy finish. And then maybe someday (laughs) you two can live in poverty. (laughs) Cue the music. All right. That's the takeaway. Great. That's all I got. That's all I got. All right. It's been great hanging out, and I'm looking forward to the busking episode. I hope that one's coming up soon. Uh, We we can make it maybe as soon as the next one. Until then. All right. Sounds good. Keep on writing.